This video is about hexaflexagons that I just discovered. I started out with a design from the Cricut store on Lori Whitlock, and uh, it's a trihexaflexagon, which means it has three hexagonally shaped faces, and they have three states each. So you can see here as I move it around, like there's a blue and green flower and here's an orange and yellow one, but then it looks like sort of a kaleidoscope pattern as it becomes inside out. And there's the third pattern that once you fold it and fold it different ways, you cycle through all the different sides and um, get to see three. Now here's another one that I found that's pretty cool. It's just some geometric designs. There was a blue and yellow star and white and then this green and yellow one, the blue changes. And here the green and yellow are gonna change. And there's a green and, so that's the other side of the green and yellow, and then the green and orange and another yellow. So it's pretty interesting just to see the different patterns that can emerge in the unfolding. So I will, go through a couple more tri-hexaflexagons, and I will be silent during those, and then we'll go on to some higher numbered ones. This trihexaflexagon has numbers and spirals. Notice how right now the spirals are going like they should on one, two, and three. But if I flip, we'll see that the spirals are still there, but obviously they're now pointing out. And they do spin around, but you can't tell. So here's another one that's just a Rubik's Cube. Uh, it starts out with blue and red and yellow, and then the white, green, and red side, and then the orange, yellow, and green side. And it's harder to tell when you mix it up that that could be a different orientation. But in a minute, we'll see that it doesn't even look like a cube. Ah, look at that, it's all messed up. So it's not quite as exciting as some of them. Now tetrahexaflexagons have four hexagonal faces. So here you see me playing with one that has just the numbers one through four. Uh, sometimes the numbers are face up like those twos were around the center and like the fours. Other times they're sort of rotated there like the ones or now like the threes. But it's pretty cool. And here's a little magic story that's told with a tetrahexaflexagon. So there's a magic hat and a wand, and it's what's going to happen. Now there's a magic hat with a question mark. Could it be a snake will come out of the hat? Or, question mark, could it be a little rabbit? And then, of course, the other orientations have all of the patterns messed up. But that's just kind of fun. And I found that from a UK site on maths, as they call it. I will put a link to it in the description. Here's another tetrahexaflexagon where a guard is inside the jail at the prisoners escaped and there's some running around with little footprints and the guard shows his badge and there's more running around with footprints and then voila, the guard is now on the outside of the big red wall and the prisoners inside the jail. And then you can fold it and see a variety of different states with the cop back inside the jail and his badge all messed up and the footprints actually going in a different direction. 
Then there's a five-sided pentahexaflexagon. This one has to do with weather, and I fumble with it pretty badly, so you can watch me try to find the sun, which there it's messed up. The moon, he's doing fine. Uh, it started out with lightning, and there's the lightning bulbs again. And we'll eventually get to a rainbow under some clouds and some thunder bursts. And if I could figure out how to do this in order, I could tell some sort of a little weather story. But I can't quite figure that out yet. Though I am being pretty lame about folding this, there are some tricks to getting to some of the faces, uh, the more possibilities that there are. And I will go into this a little bit more toward the end of this video where I look at some 12-sided flexagons. And now we come to one of my absolute favorites, which is the hexa hexaflexagon. There are six faces. This one uh, has numbers on it, so you can just watch and see that I do eventually hit each number, one, two, three, four, five, and six. It started out with six because that's the trickiest to get to. And you'll notice, as with other ones, sometimes the numbers are oriented uh, where their bottoms face the set or at the centers so they're sort of like revolving around the center oriented correctly and other times they're like head to head sort of like those sixes are right there uh, because as we know they rotate through the different states but this has six and it's pretty cool So liking the six-sided hexa hexaflexagon so much, I decided to design one for Easter. So here it is. We've got a chocolate bunny under a rainbow. We've got just some eggs. Uh, we have what's going to be a sentiment, but that happens to be messed up right there. And we have a giant egg, but that was messed up. There's the egg pattern again. Um, the sentiment has rotated, but not correct yet. Now the chocolate bunny is messed up. And now we have some tulips on a green field. They're one of the hard ones to get to. The sentiment messed up again. Uh, sometimes I try to unfold it and I have it in a way I can't get to it. There's the tulips again. I'm trying to get to the sentiment correctly spelled out. Uh, and the giant purple and pink egg. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the... Oh, and there's an Easter basket that's colorful. Um, there's some faces that are harder to get to than others, and the Easter basket and the purple egg are the hardest on this one to get to. The tulips are the next hardest, and then those eggs and the chocolate Easter bunny and the sentiment should be easiest, but the sentiment is not always correctly oriented. So there, I finally got to it. And in case you're bored now trying to watch me stumble through this, I've sped this one up where I try to go through all of the faces again. Uh, it's just kind of silly. But it's a way to keep Donna entertained for hours apparently.
And finally we get to the giant pink and purple egg and hopefully soon here we'll get to the sentiment spelled out correctly again. So of course not wanting to leave it at just six. I um, also did a seven, but I will do that in a separate video because I want to redo it. And then this is a 12 faced hexaflexagon. So it's called a dodeca hexaflexagon. Uh, I made it in the shape of a flower by cutting out the center and sort of rounding off the outside edges to make it turn somewhat more smoothly because there are lots of layers of paper there. Um, and this one is very tricky. Getting that rainbow pattern is one of the uh, bands that's hard to get to. There are three bands on this, an alpha, a beta, and I think they call the third one an omega. Uh, the alpha comes up most easily, and that's like the blue and the red, the orange and the green, I believe. And then uh, the next one comes up, there's a lilac, which is a little bit trickier. And the hardest one, I put some patterns in. So uh, we've got some interesting polka dots and uh, checkerboard, not checkerboard on this one, um, some squares and uh, some honeybees eventually. So as I fumble through this to try to get to all of the colors, just sit back and watch and enjoy the magic of my giant 12-sided one. Yay, there's the honeybees. And one of the tricky ones, the polka dots. It's pretty cool. And another tricky one, some yellow flowers on an orange field. And finally the red and white squares. I think we've covered all of the sides. And here's the same thing with a few different colors as it was originally uh, presented to me as a proof of concept. It's very, very small, but it could print out on one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Whereas the big one I made uh, took, it was 47 inches long as a strip before it was folded. Uh, and I had to print it out on several pieces of paper, obviously, and glue it together. Uh, but this little one was fun, even though it was kind of hard to turn and hard to see. But um, And it used gray some places and uh, white, I think, and a few other things. I added patterns instead to the bigger one I made so it would distinguish the colors better. There's a gray. But um, as you know, this video is pretty much just uh, illustrating how I could entertain myself for hours and hours and hours. So clearly I've had fun going down this rabbit hole. Here are some of those that I, uh, there's a pool ball one that's the Hepta 7 and a dice one. I will uh, do separate videos on those, but all of the rest of these 
I've already covered in this and shown. So uh, I think you should all go and at least try a try hexaflexagon because they're uh, beautiful. Like that geometric one is just lovely and they're easy to make. Uh, well, relatively easy to make once you get the knack of it. And they're just fascinating. So hope you all enjoyed. Bye.